Every class has their resident oddball. Back when I was in high school, ours was Tommy. He stood at around six foot three and had the body of a jock, but he was never part of the cool clique. That's because of his social skills. You see, Tommy was really, truly weird. For example, he once got caught going around collecting roadkill and then mailing the remains through people's doors. He used to get his kicks out of tormenting younger students at our school, but not in that usual way that some people do. He would go overboard, hitting them really hard with sticks and forcing them to get on all fours on the ground and then sit on them like they were his chair for long periods of time. He'd do so until their limbs or backs gave out. His antics had earned him a suspension in the past. So, like I say, this guy had problems. But because he was so huge and muscular, nobody ever bothered him or called him out on his bullcrap. Especially not me, seeing how small I was for my age. Anyway, within our year group, he mostly kept to himself. That all changed on the night of our prom. It was sometime in the middle of the evening. While I was hanging around the punch bowl, two of my buddies came up to me. They told me that they had seen Tommy outside the venue. He was apparently hanging around out by the surrounding forest all alone, looking completely disheveled. Somehow, he had gotten a hold of a hatchet. They didn't know if he'd found it somewhere, or if he'd brought it with him and stashed it. Either way, they said he was brandishing it at them saying some messed up stuff about how someone was gonna meet the reaper on prom night, and how he just hadn't decided who yet. What a nut, I said, and proceeded to forget all about it. Just some empty, meaningless nonsense from Tommy the Loon, I figured. The night continued, and while dancing with my date, I got a sudden urge for a sick. I nabbed a few from my brother earlier without him noticing. I'll be right back, I told her. I walked out into the hallway and snuck out one of the side doors of the venue. I lit my smoke and relaxed, contemplating the evening. Damn, prompts weren't as fun as the movies made them out to be, I thought. As I stood out there all by myself, puffing away, I looked out to the nearby woods. It was dark that night, but thanks to the moonlight, I could just about make something out in the tree line. It looked like a person just standing there. You know when you can just sense that somebody's watching you. Well, I couldn't see their face, but I could feel their eyes all over me. Suddenly, the figure began full-on sprinting in my direction. My heart skipped a little. It was a tall guy in a tuxedo. He stopped abruptly, maybe six feet away from me. It was Tommy. Oh, Scott, old buddy, boy, am I glad to see you, he said, in the same way an alien new to our planet might think a human communicates with another human. Say, why don't you come down to the woods real quick? I've got something I want to show you. I think you're really going to like it. I remembered what my friends had told me earlier, how Tommy had been waving a hatchet around. Luckily, he didn't seem to have it on him in that moment. And then again. Maybe that's what he wanted to show me in the woods. Uh, no thanks, man, I said. I just want to go back and dance. No offense. I tried pushing the door to go back inside. Problem. It was one of those fire escape doors. The ones that only open from the inside. I was trapped out there with him. Come with me now, Scott, he said. I insist. No thanks, Tommy. I'm really not in the mood. Tommy was much bigger than me, and his size and demeanor were quite intimidating. I was only 5'6". It was like David and Goliath. Still, I stood my ground, refusing to go with him every time he insisted. I'd never felt more alone than in that moment. I eyed Goliath over. At last, he said something. I know what you're thinking, Scott. You're thinking, well, you should hit me if you have to take me down. If I try to do something to you. What you should do. Where you should run. What you should shout. He stepped closer to me. But you can't do nothing, Scott. If I want to hurt you, 
There's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. There was an eerie silence as he stared at me for what must have been a half minute. Then, deeply, and I want to hurt ya, Scott. I want to hurt ya real bad. I was paralyzed with fear. Come on, man, I said. Don't be like this. His eyes stared at me with a fiery intensity, wide and soulless. Otherwise, his expression was disturbingly neutral. Not a moment too soon, my buddies from before came walking around the corner of the building. They'd asked my date where I'd gone, and she told them I went outside. Remembering Tommy from earlier, they both began to worry about me and came to check that I was okay. You can't put a price on good friends, let me tell you. They saw Tommy trapping me against the wall and came running. Tommy sprinted away, disappearing into the trees. He was big, but he knew he couldn't take all three of us. We went back inside and told one of our teachers what had happened. In the end, nothing came of it. I avoided Tommy after that. Graduation came and went, and life went on as normal. I erased the Tommy incident from my mind entirely. Years later, while surfing the internet, I decided to look up all my old friends and see what became of them. Many had married, others seemed to be doing well in their own way. On a whim, I decided to check Tommy's name on Facebook as well. Strange, couldn't find him. I googled his name instead. I was shocked by what I found, but I can't say I was the least bit surprised. Tommy was serving a life sentence in prison after taking the life of his college roommate. He'd used a hatchet. This is a short story, and one that may not be very scary to most of you. But to me, it's one of the most unnerving and strange things that's ever happened to me. To set the stage of the story, I'll explain a little bit about my life at the time. I'm the youngest in a family of five. When this happened, I was about nine years old. My family was living in a house that was a little too small for comfort. Thankfully, about a year earlier, my mother had gotten a promotion at her job and had finally saved up enough to be ready to buy a larger house for us to move into. We teamed up with an old family friend who was a realtor and nearly every weekend we went to do viewings of new houses as a family. This went on for months. My mother had a really strange obsession with looking at different houses, so I think she dragged out the process partially for her own enjoyment and partially to ensure that we really found that perfect house. We didn't really mind though. It was really fun to imagine what life would be like in every different house that we went to. What room would be mine? Where would we put our furniture? It was just a really fun way for me to spend my weekends as a kid, and I still look back fondly to that time. Before I continue, I want to make it completely clear that we never saw the same house twice. Every weekend it was a new house, so what is coming up just really can't be explained by me ever seeing this house before. During this time in my life, I also really suffered frequently from nightmares. They were the kind that would shock me awake and leave me cowering under my blankets until I fell back to sleep or the sun finally came up. Because of this, at the time, this dream didn't really seem out of the ordinary to me. I only remember a short amount of the dream that I had that night. The beginning of it is nothing more than a blur to me. All I know is that the premise of the dream was that I was in a dollhouse and I was exploring every single room trying to find a way out. I felt a strong urgency as I went from room to room. It was like eyes were on me the entire time and something was hungry and following me. While most of the dream is really nothing more than a blur in my memory, the next part however, I remember in vivid detail. It was almost as if I was really there. I opened a door and saw a blue staircase. The stairs were nothing more than wooden slats that lead down to an unfinished stone basement. The odd thing about this basement was that everything was that same ocean blue color. The stairs, the floor, ceiling, and walls were all painted in a thick sloppy coat of this blue color. Even the lighting was coming in as this blue hue where it streamed in from thin windows at the upper part of the stone walls. I walked hesitantly down the steps. I remember not wanting to go down there 
but my body just moved on its own, like how it does sometimes in dreams. After every step I went down, more and more of the basement came into view, and I began to hear a strange demonic sounding chanting begin to get louder. It was a two room basement. The first room, the one directly in front of me, was completely empty other than the normal basement hardware, such as a water heater. Shadow had flickered in the corner of my vision like light had been cast from a fire. I didn't look at the second room until I reached the bottom of the stairs. Once I was on the last step, I turned my head to the left and looked into the other room. I was immediately gripped with fear. What I then saw was a circle of humanoid shadows dancing hand in hand. If you've ever seen the Howl's Moving Castle movie, they sort of looked like the shadows that surrounded the Witch of the Waste in the castle scene. I was transfixed watching their dancing and frozen in fear. Suddenly, like a bad jump scare in a video game, a shadow then jumped at me into view. I then woke up terrified before it was able to grab me. I remember not being able to go back to sleep after having this dream, but like I said, I had a lot of nightmares when I was a kid. This dream, like all the others, fell away from my memory pretty quickly. Soon enough, I didn't even remember it had happened, and I moved on with my life for some time without giving it a second thought. Now the next part of the story sounds really far-fetched, but I swear it's true. Like many other Saturdays, we went to view a couple of houses. If I remember correctly, this house was the second one we saw that day, and it was going to be the last. I walked down the block hand in hand with my mother, snow crunching under my boots. We were at the back of the group, heading towards the house on the corner. It was a strange little house, painted beige and looking unfinished. The exterior of the house was strangely shaped, more of a parallelogram rather than a perfect square or rectangle. The yard was very small and it looked really cramped, with its large back porch taking up almost the entire backyard. This may seem dramatic, but I felt really uneasy before we even entered the house. Something felt off about the house, and the younger me knew it. Once we entered the house, my feelings were affirmed by my father. He was always a believer in the supernatural, and when he stepped in, he mentioned how the air felt heavy, and he felt like something was off there, and I could feel it too. It felt like eyes were on me, and I was on edge. My mother, however, always the skeptic, just hushed him and moved on with the tour so we wouldn't waste our realtor's time for nothing. So we continued going room to room and exploring this strange house. The house on its own probably would be a perfect setting to a horror story. I remember my sister describing it as being like a dollhouse. I couldn't agree more. The entire first floor, including the kitchen, dining room, and living room, was an open space that could easily be viewed from what I could describe as a balcony-type hallway on the second floor. It was like the whole ceiling had just been taken out. Even the kitchen cabinets ended short like they stopped at an invisible ceiling. This wasn't the only strange thing about the house, but everything else on the first floor was in small details that built into a really scary picture. Some of it was nothing big like every light being a pool chain and none of the switches on the wall seeming to work. Other details like how the whole first floor just seemed dirty. Floorboards were broken, there was trash in the corners, broken molding on the walls, broken counters and cabinets in the kitchen, and things like that. I think the worst part was the doors. Every door had the lock set up so that you'd lock it from the outside, as if to keep something or someone locked in the room. Some of these doors, especially the bedrooms, the inside of the doors were really scratched up as if something was trying to get out when it was locked. We had grown uneasy at this point. My parents and elder siblings especially, who at the time better understood the connotations of the weird things we found. Even so, we then moved on to finish the tour. There was really only one main room on the upstairs of the house. It was the master bedroom, and somehow the strangest part of the house up to that point. While the rest of the house was dirty and damaged, the master bedroom seemed to be completely remodeled and new. It was honestly the nicest bedroom that I'd ever seen. It was huge and fancy looking, and it even had a jacuzzi in it. The weird part about this though, was that the room was all decorated in the same blood red maroon color. The walls, the carpet, the bedding, everything in the room was this color. Something about it was really unsettling, and when my sister made a snarky joke about how the color was to hide the blood stains when whatever murderer killed their victim here, my mother ushered us out of the room quickly. By this point, my whole family was thoroughly creeped out 
and ready to leave this house. But because we had already seen so much, we decided we might as well finish with the last room, the basement. Though things were already really strange and unsettling, the basement was the final straw for me. We opened the basement to reveal a set of blue stairs leading down to a blue room. Though I had forgotten the nightmare up until now, it all came rushing back to me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing at first. Every step I went down only proved what I was seeing was real. Exactly like my dream, I walked down the blue steps into an unfinished blue basement. The walls, the floor, the ceiling, and stairs were all slathered thickly in the same color of ocean blue paint. The only difference was the room was dimly lit only by the white midday winter light streaming in from the windows. I was so afraid to see the other room as I approached the bottom of the stairs. Finally, I had turned my head left to look into the second room and saw nothing. It was completely empty other than what looked like a filled hole in the middle of the room where the shadow had been dancing around in my dream. Perhaps it was from a furnace or something else, but I didn't care to know. Tears threatening to escape from my eyes, I grabbed my mom's hand and then said, Mom, I really want to leave. I'm scared. My family agreed that it was time to end this strange tour. My mother took me outside while my father and siblings finished up with the realtor, saying their goodbyes. My mom asked me what was wrong, but I never told her. I didn't expect her to believe me that I had dreamed about a house that I'd never seen or been in months before being here. We left that day and clearly never moved ahead to purchase. Quickly, my family forgot all about that strange house, but to this day, it still really haunts me. I can't explain how I had that dream or what it meant, but all I know is that something happened in that house, and I really don't want to know what it was.